Good afternoon, it is Leon from Sofia, Bulgaria here and it is the 4th of June, I decided to make a quick video. Uh, today the topic will be corruption, so in particular in Bulgaria, so a bit of a darker uh, subject about this country that some people now and then ask me about, like how is corruption in Bulgaria, do you have to deal with it, how bad is it and will I come across it as well. So I'll keep the video sort of light. Um, normally I don't really make videos about negative topics such as this because I like to stay relatively pos positive. There's plenty negative news already in the world, but it is a sort of a serious topic that I want to share my own light on. So first of all, I haven't directly been in touch with uh, corruption in the sense that I had to bribe someone or or uh, have been offered bribes and that's mostly because I'm not in the realm to come in touch with that. I've never come across it because I typically drive the speed, I, I shoot, um, I don't drink, I don't use drugs, I basically don't go out in nightlife so there's little, I'm, I'm sort of an introvert, I don't uh, go out too much besides sport, travel and the things that I enjoy. So I'm unlikely to come across that that thing uh, on my own, you know, there's just no reason for that to happen that I come in contact with cops, let's say, that it doesn't happen. Uh, the amount of times I've been in contact with police, I've had uh, relatively decent experiences, they're always friendly, but uh, I haven't committed offenses in that sense. Now, where corruption has affected me is, for example, when I was in the hospital. I've had an allergic reaction once where I needed to be hospitalized because it was bad enough that my throat got swollen. It was a reaction to medicine. And I was in the hospital and there I noticed that it was, well, it was Pirogov, let's say the main emergency hospital in the city of Sofia. Essentially, it was six, seven years ago, I think. I was in the hospital and... There was nothing there, so it was in the toxicity department. There was no toilet paper, the bathroom door couldn't be locked. There was no cutlery, uh, the food was, well, the food is food, I will not complain, but I basically got soup, bread with butter and some jam, but I had no knife to spread the butter on my bread, you know, that sort of thing. There was essentially nothing at all. I got pajamas that were striped prison pajamas and they were way too big for me so when I was walking around the hallway I had to pull up the pants or hold them up because if, if, if I would let go they would just drop on the floor um, and then I noticed obviously that the corruption and lack of funds even though there's lots of EU funds being poured into this country they sort of disappear uh, at the very least it did not go to that hospital and it was basically a third world scenario. Then there was one spoon in our room. I was with three guys. Uh, two others were there because they were heavily intoxicated because of alcohol and needed to detox. I was there because I had an allergic reaction. One guy left after two days when he basically uh, got rid of his hangover. He was very intoxicated, you know, screaming at night and stuff. He left. And I got his spoon so I could eat soup and I didn't need to drink it anymore. We had one soup in the whole room. So this whole lack of funds, no soap, no basic hygiene, no towels in a basic hospital, in the main hospital of the city, is a sign of corruption. Um, quite obvious. So Bulgarians, when they go to hospital, typically what they do is they bring a sports bag with their own cutlery, their own toilet paper, pajamas, new clothes, everything, as if they go on a vacation. Tragic but true. Now where else have I seen corruption? I typically don't go into this because it is so dark that I don't want to. And it is so all-encompassing that I just want to sort of pretend it doesn't exist. But uh, for the sake of this video, I thought I'll just highlight one case of corruption and the reaction to that. We have a road that leads uh, to the city of Svoge from Sofia and from there to Vratsa, which is a bit to the north. 
this road has been reconstructed and has been made to contain radioactive gravel and obviously that's been done on purpose because that radioactive gravel comes from a uranium mine which has been closed in the 90s first of all you should know that Bulgaria has uranium mines all over the country but in particular in the Isker Gorge which is north of Sofia and stretches for let's say 60 kilometers I know this area extremely well and I've hiked through every village for every town and when you hike there now and then you see a radioactive sign uh, you know the sign from some Chernobyl movie probably uh, you see that and what you see is a big pit with gravel in front of it and in con- in contrary to how a mine should be closed with concrete so no animal or human can ever get in again it's basically closed with uh, gravel just random gravel because it's cheaper uh, just to throw sand and gravel on a pit rather than make a concrete structure now what happened is that for the particular reconstruction of this road um, there's obviously a public tender there's eu money which get sort of embezzled the funds kind of disappear and are spread through firms that are friends of so and so or and you know it goes that circle um, radioactive gravel was taken from the mine so it was sort of reopened the gravel was mixed in with the asphalt and spread all over the road for i don't know tens of kilometers as far as we know only this stretch of the road but who knows where else Uh, persons were getting cancer in the area now i don't know in what numbers but uh, someone some way found out that there was radioactive gravel on the road now obviously nobody wanted to investigate this so what people did is they just went with their own geiger counter called the news who then came and investigated it as well and they tested the gravel on the side of the road with this geiger teller counter and it showed four times the the norm that would be permissible because well radioactivity is everywhere so there is some level of exposure that can be considered negligible but four times the maximum exposure that a human can tolerate was found just on the side of the road and now when you drive a road it gets worn it gets wear and tear and the dust is exposed you know that's just how it goes so the people are obviously very concerned living in these towns and the news paid attention to this so it's not that you cannot discuss these topics it's only that when you get very close to certain people there might be a backlash but you can freely discuss such topics and corruption cases in general but the the thing is that then there's a very short outcry in the media the the news discusses it and then you never hear from it again so this scandal is to me at least so big and so serious that uh, it makes me doubt everything i love about this country and second first of all that this happens is obviously obscene it's just disgusting second of all uh, the complete lack of response you get you get it was in 2015 that they found this out you get some small public outcry and you'll never hear from it again never ever so it's not really raised to the eu uh, there's no further investigation it's a small scandal and then it's gone and i'll tell you why this is exactly it's not because the bulgarians are lazy or passive or they sort of tolerate this but it's so all-encompassing like i said that you eventually need to start to ignore it because if you start thinking about yourself and your family and how this might affect you um, you'll start thinking about well what other roads will this reductive asphalt be on is it my street is it the highway that i take my kids on to the seaside and if you start thinking about how deep all of this is how big and that you cannot escape it it overwhelms your mind and you'll lose a night of sleep and then you need to go back to work and you'll just choose to ignore it altogether because it is too big to comprehend and it is too serious it will be a cloud above your head that you will never be able to recover from now the same thing happened to me because i've hiked all across these places when i read these news articles i knew exactly which mine 
uh, I can walk you there. Most Bulgarians, they will not know the exact place where all of this uranium comes from, but I do. I've hiked in all of these villages uh, at least a hundred times. I know every street, I know every mountain top because when I came here, all I did for at least five years, explore that particular area. So I know the mines, I know where they are, I know where the signs are, I know the maps. I've hiked all across that and then later the news came out. Now, the topic is too big for me to accept as well, because I obviously get concerned about my health. Will I've had enough exposure? It's obviously something I cannot see. Will that lead to cancer of any sort or whatever? And then I start thinking, oh, I've, I've walked in the gravel along these roads as well, waiting for hitchhiking, waiting for cars, getting on, getting off the bus. Uh, it gets so serious that you start thinking, okay, I'll ju just forget about it, have a coffee, forget about it, because this is going to ruin my day, this overthinking, it's too much to handle. And then you just cross it off your list, try to forget about it and not to think about it again. Um, because it is so deeply ingrained in the society as well, this, first of all, these scandals, they happen all the time. Um, and second of all, that... The serious, seriousness of it is so big and so deep and so on so many layers that you can do nothing else and ignore it because you're just one person and all the others whom this truly bugs, they are obviously bothered by a whole other range of scandals as well and it's so bad for them that they say, I'm leaving this country, I'm gone, you, they won't see me here again. This is so bad, it is so horrible, this is African levels of corruption. I'm just out because there's no way to battle all of this. And the rest of it who stay here, including myself, are sort of getting by. And I have an excellent life here, I'm not, I'm not uh, insulting anything here, I'm just trying to shine a light on this topic that I otherwise don't discuss and that might be interesting for other people as well, you know? The other people here, they are just getting by and they are too... The competent people left and the others who stay here, they might also be competent, but they will not have, first of all, the connections or second of all, the capabilities to do anything about such corruption cases. What can one person do? What can a whole nation do a whole lot? But then you get a passivity as well. And that reminds me a bit of the Soviet Union. Uh, you have a big scandal and... The people basically, they don't shrug their shoulders, but they try to just let it slip. And you can have something very, very big, uh, such as this radioactive thing. And people will just say, oh, well, let's hope it's not too bad. Let's hope we'll be fine. Let's hope it's not on other roads. Uh, and yes, they are like that. That's how the system is. It's horrible. But what can we do? What can we do? And that's part of the reaction. And then you see it on the news a few times. People are a bit upset, but immediately forget about it. And you should see that as a bit of a survival strategy as well. Because if you go too deep into it, you get so upset that you'll just pack your bags and leave this country. Um, so that's one thing. And in that sense, corruption definitely has affected me because I've walked in all of these places all of the time. And if I start to think about it, and if that's actually true that there's these four times of radiation level that would be permissible, I've been exposed to that pretty badly. And in that sense, it has affected me. Now I haven't noticed the, the result of that yet, and hopefully I never will. But honestly, who knows? And that's the thing, the doubt that you cannot trust your institutions because they, the news, they went to these companies as well. And as I said, they can sort of dig, but they cannot dig too deep. So that's also uh, just as far as they go. So they start to ask the company, so oh, it's not radioactive. We have, we have the permissible, we have the permits. Um, it's been checked, it's been confirmed, there's no risk. Yes, but it's a, it's a circle, it's a closed circle that you cannot enter into because one hand covers the other, you know, and that's how all the institutions work. And what Bulgarians eventually do is they start to live outside of the institutions, which directly results in a heavy distrust, 
which I can say is totally granted, a heavy distrust of authority. Such a big distrust that we've seen um, the Bulgarians have not taken up the COVID vaccine, which I actually congratulate them for because uh, we've had the least amount of uh, the, the lowest percentage of vaccine uptake in the EU. And Bulgaria got through a pretty decent, if you ask me, and I sort of congratulate them and their mistrust of authority in, in this case. But the total mistrust sort of gives a dark cloud above a society. And you're always right to distrust this, uh, this authority because corruption is a thing that, uh, that affects all humans. It affects a sort of dark trait in humanity that power corrupts and money corrupts. And as far as people can go, they might go once they start to have power and money. And in Bulgaria, you can go pretty far. And that's unfortunately the case that uh, it's affected many people, including the politicians. And the Bulgarians now have this mistrust and the mistrust cannot be switched off. So this sort of mistrust extends as well and it goes pretty deep. And in that sense, corruption affects the whole of uh, society because you also start to mistrust your doctors because how do they get into power did they buy their way into a degree uh, you don't know um, it goes so deep that you don't know where it stops and you don't know where it begins and you start sort of picking at threats that you cannot uh, pull all the way out because you are you don't maybe don't have the intelligence, don't have the sources, don't have the information to to uh, bite your way through all of the things to make the right decisions. And what you do is you, as a defense mechanism, have a general mistrust of everything, and you want to see things are true first before you believe them. And this is a defense mechanism that serves the Bulgarians pretty well because street smarts are good for everyone. Now, uh, that was one example of corruption, a pretty dark one, I have to say. It's a dark cloud above my head as well, because I don't know how it affects me, if it actually does. And I can be a bit concerned about my health. I can be a bit of a hypochondriac in that sense. And I just don't want to think about it. And that also makes me realize that uh, the learned helplessness is that we cannot do anything about it. Just let it slip now, move on with the day, try to survive. And that's in particular true if you also have a lower income and you have your parents and family to take care of. Can you honestly blame people for not doing anything about this giant, giant thing opposite of them that will basically stamp them and destroy them if they do anything about them? There, there's no way, you know. And that sort of leads me to sympathize with the Bulgarians as well and those who left and I hope will, I don't know, will find their way abroad. Second is a very, very dark case of corruption as well. Just having my coffee and one that seriously upsets me too. I'll, I'll just give, highlight a few things. Um, there is obviously corrupt cops uh, that are pretty corrupt here. Now, bribes are widely accepted by police. In particular, we had a case just a few months ago, or let's say a half a year ago, where there was a Bulgarian guy in a Porsche driving above the speed limit. He had either drunk a lot or used drugs. He got stopped by the cops, had to do an alcohol test. He drank too much, but he had a couple hundred in his pocket, gave it to the cop. And she, the woman cop in this case, let him go. So he continues, uh, he's on drugs, I don't know what, but drives very, very fast. On the ring road, he crashes into another car with a French man and a woman, two foreigners in them. The guy, the French guy, dies on the spot because he's hit by this Porsche. According to news reports, the Porsche guy, he calls a friend because he's obviously not in the right state of mind. He calls a friend and he said, oh, my Porsche is destroyed. Other bystanders, they came to the help of the victim, this Bulgarian man, or sorry, this French man and woman, and started to help them, obviously, there's good bystanders here. Of course, people will help. There's a lot of Bulgarians filled with good people. Start to help them. And then the driver, the guy of the Porsche said, what do you care about this foreigner? Look at my car, something like that. And so what I actually read in the news, that's what happened. This is so dark. First of all, this sole incident, but second of all, because the cop 
let him go. And in that case, you see a direct result of how corruption kills. It kills innocent bystanders, innocent people who had nothing to do with Bulgaria per se, who are just maybe visiting or living here. And the corruption kills them, those who had zero to do with it in the first case, innocent people. And that's a very, very dark uh, example as well that also makes me put into doubt everything I love about this country and uh, brings me in a dark place. That's also why I never discuss it because I find it too too rough and it's something I just uh, prefer to ignore because it's too heavy to, to swallow, you know? Now, these are two examples that I've just given that are not per se unique to this country, but if we look at the European Union, uh, Bulgaria stands out in this regard. In these cases of corruption, sorry, but it wins the prize. It's, it just does, I'm sorry. Um, and these are things that I wish people know before coming here, because what's obvious on first sight is the things that make you fall in love with this country. Oh, nature, people, very nice. Yes, all of it is great, very cool. But the things that sort of get under your skin at a later level can make you fall out of love with this country and you'll, make a, you'll get a very bitter reality check when you find out things that you cannot unknow later, you cannot unsee them. And these can make you fall out of love or sort of make you feel a shock at how you fit into this society and that perhaps uh, you wish you had known sooner. And this sort of deeply ingrained sort of corruption plagues the country, many Bulgarians wish it would disappear and many Bulgarians obviously don't bribe anyone whatsoever there's a ton of good people and I'm not saying this to sort of bitch about the country because it's a very similar level we have such corruption scandals in my country we have for example boats who in the Netherlands uh, they come into the country from Germany these large cargo ships and in the Netherlands, you're allowed to sort of raise or release toxic gases into the air to a certain level. And then the ships, because these norms are higher in the Netherlands, they let go of sort of toxic cancer causing gases in our country because we don't have the legal ramifications to deal with that, let's say. So I live on a river. Who knows? I've been exposed to this benzene gas or whatever. That if you go look at ships, they sort of release just to drop off their toxic loads. Now, I'm sort of over-analytical. I know that not everyone is like that. But if I sort of dig into something, I keep digging. And when it comes to Bulgaria, I can go into such a deep rabbit hole that eventually it makes me uh, pull into question everything that I see around me. And it makes me bitter and sort of angry and skeptical, uh, very cynical. And if you... It, it, can you imagine have, having actually lived during sort of a grand collapse here, uh, stuck inflation during the, what was it, the 90s or something, or a bit later, and having all of these bad, bad things happen and then reading another thing on the news, it's just another thing. And the people just eventually shrug their shoulders and are like, ah, what can I do? Honestly, what can I do? And I can't blame them. And that gives the mindset of many Bulgarians who may seem grumpy or bitter, a bit of a place, like I can understand them. And the good thing is that we have a younger uh, generation right now who has the fight in them, sort of. And what I see in the younger generation right now is uh, pure Europeans. So I'm not saying we're the Soviet Union here or anything of that sort. I see a new layer of society developing that... Uh, will do things differently but these scandals they keep plaguing society and it will be that way uh, for the coming future because the road is still there the radioactive road is still there you will never hear from it again uh, this passiveness is something that plagues the country as well uh, the road will not be destroyed and if it will be destroyed uh, that's the thing one scandal uh, builds upon another so if the road is eventually destructed, let's say, it will be done by some other firm as well, and they will not follow the right safety precautions because it will be too expensive. So that dust will be released and that will be even worse than just leaving the road where it is right now. And then you can see that if, if you start to focus on this corruption and how you find 
solutions and ways out of it. It might seem very simple. Oh, you take the road away. Yes, but who will do that and in what way? And when you start to truly think about these things and how deep it goes, uh, by the time that you realize that this is just a clusterfuck, the walls of your apartment will start coming towards you and you just want to go for a walk. And I hope I shone a light on uh, how corruption works. Uh, often Westerners don't understand it and uh, often they think it's 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 innocent uh, or it's just a sign of a sort of relaxed society that sort of flaunts at the authorities and that's sort of fine because the Bulgarians are smart and um, they know how the system works against them. Yes, perhaps, but at the same time you should realize the dark edge that it has and how deep it goes and how serious it is and that that's some baggage that you need to know, you need to carry, you cannot unsee. Uh, but it will also make you wiser in your choice of other living in book area or anywhere else because this issue plagues a lot of other countries as well. I don't know, Italy, uh, even the Netherlands with a lot of things. But on a real deep level, Bulgaria is plagued by this and that's just what I wanted to share. I hope it changes, but so far uh, what I can do is uh, try to inform you and give you a realistic uh, image of this country as well because I know it very well I know where the mines are I know the village of Kubislav I've walked over the mine essentially because that's how the, the trail goes it goes right around it and you see these signs and that's basically all that reminds you that there is such a mine um, so I sort of know what I'm talking about when I discuss this topic but I don't mean to be offensive uh, on the other hand I find Bulgarians are pretty easily offended when it comes to their country. But I say nothing they wouldn't say themselves. If you ask anyone leaving this country, they will mention such uh, such cases, such scandals, and how it plagues them. So I'm not saying anything outrageous. And uh, I also think that Bulgarians should develop a bit of a thicker skin when uh, foreigners criticize their country because it eventually it's also my money, my tax money, my parents' tax money that comes here and is wasted on such things uh, a lot of it is stolen you know and it's just uh, a whole other a whole other topic is if the EU is at all beneficial for Bulgaria right now a lot of people are uh, EU skeptics right now and then another uh, part of society is very pro-EU and that's especially in the light of what's happening in Ukraine right now and you don't see Bulgarians divided on a lot of topics. Uh, at least I haven't seen it. But this is actually a thing, the EU thing right now, that splits a society pretty much in half or in 80, 20. I'm not quite sure. But uh, it's interesting times up ahead. I don't want to go further on this rapid hole because that's also the reason why I really don't make these videos because uh, maybe I get too negative and... There's negative things to say about everything, but anyway, I'll catch you in the next uh, video. I hope that was informative and not too long. So take care. Mm -hmm.